Have you ever wondered about the secret gentleman's agreement between China and Duterte in Ayungan Shoal? Picture this. A shoal off the coast of the Philippines, Ayungan Shoal, a seemingly insignificant speck in the vast ocean, yet it holds strategic importance that many might not realize. It's a crucial point in the South China Sea, a region simmering with territorial disputes and geopolitical tension. Ayungan Shoal, my friends, is at the epicenter of a power play between superpowers. Now let's rewind back a bit and delve into the era of President Rodrigo Duterte. Known for his brash and unfiltered style, Duterte was also marked by a decidedly pro-China stance during his presidency. This was a shift from the Philippines' historical ties with the United States, a relationship forged and strengthened over decades. Under Duterte's administration, an intriguing development took place. A gentleman's agreement with China over Ayungan Shoal, a pact shrouded in mystery, the details of which are still largely unknown. An agreement made behind closed doors, away from the public eye and the scrutiny of international law. This secret agreement raised more than a few eyebrows, not only within the Philippines, but across the global stage. After all, why would Duterte, the leader of a sovereign nation, enter into such a clandestine pact with China, a nation that has been flexing its muscles in the South China Sea? What could possibly have motivated Duterte to enter such a secret agreement with China? The answer, my friends, is not as straightforward as you might think. It's a tangled web of geopolitics, national interests, and the ever-present quest for power. As we delve deeper into this narrative, you will find that the gentleman's agreement between Duterte and China is more than just a secret pact. It's a story of political intrigue, strategic maneuvering, and the delicate balance of power in the South China Sea. It's a tale that continues to unfold, its implications far-reaching and profound. So buckle up and let's dive into the depths of this mysterious gentleman's agreement. Keep wondering, keep questioning, because the truth is often stranger than fiction. And remember, the pursuit of knowledge never ends. In the next scene, we will explore Duterte's pro-China stance in more detail. Stay tuned. Duterte's presidency marked a shift in foreign policy with a pronounced tilt towards China. But why was that so? Let's dive into the murky waters of international diplomacy and see what we can uncover. Rodrigo Duterte, the 16th president of the Philippines, was known for his strongman political style and his controversial policies. But perhaps the most significant shift during his tenure was his pivot towards China, diverging from the country's historical alliance with the United States. Duterte's pro-China stance was a clear departure from his predecessors, and it was based on a complex mix of economic and political factors. On the economic front, Duterte saw China as a vast market for Philippine goods and a source of much-needed investments. He believed that by aligning more closely with China, the Philippines could reap substantial economic benefits. China's Belt and Road Initiative, a global development strategy involving infrastructure development and investments in nearly 70 countries, was particularly attractive to Duterte. He saw it as an opportunity to fuel the Philippine economy and provide jobs for Filipinos. On the political front, Duterte was frustrated with the United States' criticism of his administration's war on drugs and alleged human rights abuses. He saw a closer relationship with China as a way to push back against this criticism and assert the Philippines' independence in its foreign policy. But Duterte's pro-China stance was not without controversy. Critics argued that it could undermine the Philippines' territorial claims in the South China Sea and put the country at a disadvantage in its dealings with China. Despite these concerns, Duterte remained committed to his pro-China policy throughout his presidency. Could the reasons for Duterte's pro-China stance help us understand the nature of this secret agreement? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this intriguing subject in our next segment. With the change in leadership, the Philippines has seen a drastic shift in its foreign policy. But how does this impact the secret agreement? The winds of change have indeed been sweeping through the Philippine political landscape, particularly in the realm of foreign policy.
Under the new leadership of Ferdinand Marcos Jr., the Philippines has shifted its foreign policy focus towards the United States, a move that starkly contrasts with the pro-Beijing stance of his predecessor, Rodrigo Duterte. This shift is not just about changing allies on paper. It represents a strengthening of military ties between the United States and the Philippines. The United States has gained access to more Philippine military bases, a strategic move that has drawn criticism from China. Why, you ask? Because China views this as part of the U.S. efforts to contain its influence in the region. The Philippines is strategically located between the South China Sea and the Pacific, making it a highly coveted piece in the geopolitical chessboard where the United States and China are vying for control over maritime resources and military dominance. The historical relationship between the Philippines and the United States dates back to the colonial era, with the U.S. providing military support and investments during the rule of Ferdinand Marcos Sr. Despite past human rights violations and corruption, the U.S.-Philippines alliance remains strong, with the United States being a major supplier of military equipment and assistance to the Philippines. The recent Balikatan joint military exercises and Marcos Jr.'s visit to the White House signal a renewed warmth in U.S.-Philippines relations, much to the dismay of China. So where does this leave the secret agreement that Duterte had with China over Ayungin Shoal? The shift in foreign policy under Marcos Jr. could potentially undermine this agreement, leading to a new era of tensions and uncertainties. China will not be pleased, to say the least. How does China view this shift in Philippine foreign policy, especially given the secret agreement? Well, that's a question we'll delve into in the next scene. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the threads of this intriguing geopolitical saga. The secret gentleman's agreement undoubtedly has significant implications. But what exactly are these implications? Let's dive into the potential effects of this covert contract. It's like a stone thrown into the waters of the South China Sea, creating ripples that can change the course of the currents. First up, we have the territorial disputes in this strategic body of water. This secret agreement could either soothe or inflame these conflicts. If it leans towards favoring China's territorial claims, it could escalate tensions with other countries vying for the same waters, notably Vietnam, Taiwan, Malaysia and Brunei. However, if it's designed to promote peaceful negotiations, it could pave the way for a more harmonious resolution. Next, let's consider the triangular relationship between the Philippines, China and the United States. This pact could significantly alter the dynamics. If the agreement is largely pro-China, it could strain the Philippines' relationship with the United States, its longtime ally. On the other hand, if it balances the interests of both superpowers, it could potentially place the Philippines in a powerful position of influence. Lastly, the secret agreement could tip the geopolitical balance in the region. The South China Sea, with its rich resources and strategic location, is a hotbed for power struggles. Any agreement, secret or not, could shift this delicate equilibrium. It could either solidify China's dominance, or it could create room for other regional and global powers to assert their influence. We also have to consider the domestic implications. This agreement could stir the pot of national sentiment. It could provoke public outrage or approval depending on the nature of the deal and how it is perceived by the Filipino people. So the impact of this secret gentleman's agreement is like a multifaceted gem, each facet reflecting a different consequence. It's a complex puzzle that could significantly shape the future of the region. Could this secret agreement potentially ignite further disputes in the South China Sea? That's a question we'll continue to ponder as we navigate the murky waters of this geopolitical saga. There are still many unanswered questions surrounding this secret agreement. What are some of these burning questions? As we delve deeper into the labyrinth of this clandestine accord, we can't help but ponder. The exact terms of the agreement, for instance, remain shrouded in mystery. What concessions did Duterte make and what did he gain in return? Did he sacrifice Philippine sovereignty over territories in the South China Sea or was there a more nuanced negotiation? Another question that looms large is whether the agreement has been respected by both parties. Has China upheld its end of the bargain? Has the Philippines? Or have there been breaches, subtle or blatant, that have jeopardized the integrity of this agreement? And if so, what are the implications? 
And then the most complex question of all, how can this issue be resolved? Is it a matter of renegotiating the agreement or does the solution lie in a broader shift in the Philippines' foreign policy? Might it require a mediating party or perhaps an international tribunal to arbitrate? These questions are not easily answered and require a deep understanding of the intricate dynamics at play. Furthermore, what of the role of the United States in all this? With the strengthening of US-Philippine military ties under President Marcos Jr., how will this impact the secret agreement? Will it add another layer of complexity to an already convoluted situation? Finally, what does this agreement mean for the average Filipino? How does it affect their daily lives, their future, and their perception of their country's place in the world? These are the questions that matter most, the ones that hit closest to home. In the end, what will it take to get these questions answered and resolve this complex issue? The secret agreement has undoubtedly complicated the South China Sea disputes, but what's the way forward? As we gaze towards the horizon, we find ourselves navigating the tumultuous waters of geopolitical complexities. The South China Sea disputes, further convoluted by the clandestine agreement, necessitate a careful examination of potential solutions. With the shifting dynamics in Philippine foreign policy, the road ahead is anything but straight. First, let's consider a diplomatic solution. A peaceful resolution through dialogue and negotiation is, of course, the most desired outcome. It's an approach that aligns with international law and the principles of peaceful coexistence. It demands mutual respect for sovereignty, a willingness to compromise, and an unwavering commitment to peace. However, the secret agreement, the strengthening of US-Philippine military ties, and China's dissatisfaction all contribute to a thickening fog of uncertainty. Will dialogue be enough to cut through this fog? Can the nations involved set aside their differences and reach a consensus that respects each other's interests while maintaining regional stability? On the other hand, we have the military solution. The recent warmth in US-Philippine relations and the increased American access to Philippine military bases suggest a potential shift towards a more confrontational stance. But this path is fraught with danger. It risks escalating tensions and could potentially spiral into a full-blown conflict with far-reaching consequences. The South China Sea, with its rich maritime resources and strategic location, is a chessboard on which global powers play their game of influence and dominance. The challenge is to ensure this game doesn't turn into a battle. The road ahead is uncertain, but one thing is clear. The decisions made today will shape the future of the region. It's a delicate balancing act, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Can the South China Sea disputes be resolved peacefully, or are we heading towards a more confrontational path? The secret gentleman's agreement between China and Duterte and Ayung in Shoal is indeed a complex and intriguing issue. We have delved into the context of this agreement, exploring Duterte's pro-China stance and the subsequent shift in Philippine foreign policy. We've examined the far-reaching implications of this clandestine pact and pondered the many unanswered questions that still hang in the air. We also ventured into the potential solutions that could steer the ship of this political conundrum towards calmer waters. While the road ahead may seem foggy, the strength of a nation lies in its ability to adapt and navigate through such complexities. The Philippines, a nation strategically located at the crossroads of the South China Sea and the Pacific, is no stranger to these challenges. As the tides of geopolitical alliances ebb and flow, it remains poised for the journey ahead. Thank you for joining us on this journey of exploration and discovery. Subscribe for more amazing content and keep wondering. Don't miss out on future explorations and discoveries. Hit subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated with our new content. Your journey of wonder continues with every video. Stay connected and engaged on social media. Continue the conversation, follow us. Thank you for being a part of the Have You Ever Wondered community. Keep wondering, keep discovering. Until next time.